Okay, so um, hello everyone. Today, me and Clara will be sharing a short topics about 5G and IoT. So um, this, we just started learning and there's more to look, look into it. So I hope that later the, the question wouldn't be that hard. Okay, so um, since this is a 15 minutes uh, topic, so um, we'll try our best to make it as comprehensive as possible, despite the speed that we are talking. Okay, so let's get moving. So today the agenda will be like, um, what is 5G? How does 5G works? Advantages of 5G and 5G versus 4G versus 5G and 5G and impacts on the IoT. Okay, so um, what is 5G? So um, before knowing how 5G works, we should actually know what 5G is. So um, 5G is the next generation of a mobile broadband that will eventually replace or at least augment your 4G ITE connection. So what does an um, LTE stands for? So it actually stands for um, long-term evolution. So I guess that everyone actually have seen a 4G LTE connection on top of your, on the top right of your mobile screen. Yeah. So have you ever wonder why it's displayed as a 4G LTE but not 4G? Well, actually I have read up. So actually that I read 4G when they just started, they did not meet the requirements set by the International Telecommunication Union. So unfortunately to say that even if 3G, even 3G improvement had already caught up to it. So this LTE was considered as a further improvement of 3G, but not near, stand, near the standard set by 4G, uh, the 4G standard set by the IT. So in other words that the LTE actually did also did not meet the 4G standard by set by the IT. So however, it's faster than 4G. Yeah. Then in fact that, do, do you all know that there's actually something else like called 4G LTE A? It's like A is stands for advanced. So um, this was said to be three times faster than 4G LTE. But obviously the A, the A word doesn't just for showing that. Okay, so moving back to 5G. With 5G, you will see exponentially faster download and upload speed in terms of latency or the time taken for the device to communicate with wireless network will drastically decrease. Though greater use of um, radio spectrum, it will allow more devices to access mobile internet at the same time, allowing us to simultaneously connect more devices to the same network without sacrificing the performance. So uh, next, we will move on to how does 5G work? So, so 5G actually, uh, 5G achieved its unparalleled uh, latency by operating across uh, three spectrum bands. So the 5G operates on three different spectrum bands that are the low, mid and high spectrum. So, so the low band spectrum can also describe as a sub one gigahertz spectrum. It's a primary uh, band used by carrier in US for LTE. The bandwidth is nearly depleted while um, low band spectrum offers a great coverage area and wall penetration. That is a, but then there is a big drawback. So the drawback is actually the peak data speed uh, will be kept around 100 Mbps. In addition, do you actually know that lower frequency signal actually attenuate uh, much slower than high frequency, means that the signal will get slower as you travel further. So, so I'm not sure that everyone has a Wi-Fi at home with, a, with this 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Have you noticed like the signal, that you were able to receive the signal when you are actually further from the router or where else? Um, if 5G, sometimes you cannot receive the signal. If you haven't do so, please, you can try to see whether is it correct or not. So um, as for mid-band spectrum, provide faster speeds and lower uh, latency than low band. It does, however, fail to penetrate buildings as, as effectively as a low band spectrum. Expect, expect big speed up to one gigabits per second on a mid-band spectrum. It's likely to become available in major city around the US by the end of 2020. 
So lastly, we have this uh, high band spectrum. It's delivered, it is what delivered the highest performance 5G high band spectrum can offer peak speed of to 10 gigahertz and it's extremely low latency. The, but then there's also a big drawback is that um, it covers, it has a low coverage area and um, building penetration is actually poor. So um, like walls, buildings and other structure, like uh, also there's some kind of type of glasses or material can actually block the signal entirely. So that means that if, that means that to create an effective high band network, we will need a lot of base station, a lot of base station or cell station to improve the coverage. So as you can see in this picture, right? So let's example, let's take it as example that at the left side. So this is like a 200 kilometer square. So as for a lower frequency, they are able to travel further. We don't have to deploy a lot of cell, cell towers. So like this hexagon shape, right? The cell towers will be at the middle. So, so to cover these 200 kilometers square, they just only need three cell towers. But whereas as you see the right side, right? Like still the same, 200 kilometers square. So there's so many hexagon shape that so many cell tower deployed over there. So it means that this is this this shows that is um disadvantage of having this because um the because it gives a lower coverage. So the speed you get is also also depends on which spectrum band and oper and operators run the 5G technology on how much the carrier invests in the new mass and the transmitter. Yeah so we will be moving on to advantages of 5G. So um, that is actually four, uh, four advantages that I want to share. So the first one is the big data rate. So um, 5G will offer significantly faster data speed. Um, big data rates can hit 20 gigs per, per 20 BPS download speed and 10 BPS up, uh, upload speed per mobile base station. So as for the latency, the time is the time taken for the data to travel from one place to another place uh, should be at least four milliseconds in ideal circumstances. And at one millisecond for most, for use cases that is demand the utmost speed. So, and there is this mobility, which is um, the 5G, with the 5G, the base stations should support a movement up to 310 uh, meter per hour. This means that the base station should work across a range of antenna movement, even on a high speed train. So have you ever wondered like, how does this high speed train actually able to continuously receive the signal across multiple regions? So there is some um, things I want to share that I learned in my university. So there's something called the soft and the hard handover. This hard, this hard handover is not efficient as the trains reaches another region, it has to break off, break off the connection from the previous tower. Then, and then it will establish a connection with the tower that they reach. So this is, um, this the user will experience like breakage, like suddenly, oh, the connection break already, then they will like reload. So this is uh, not a very good experience. And then as for this uh, soft handover, right, it actually is before reaching the other region, right? It will automatically establish the connection of, of the, the approaching uh, region and then they will break the whole connection. So this is how we can experience a, a smooth connection with no breakage. So the last thing will be um, connection density. So 5G should be able to um, support many more connected devices than LTE. The standard state for uh, 5G should be um, able to support like one at, like one million connected uh, devices per meters per kilometer. So that's a huge number, which um, takes into account of school of device that will power the Internet of Things. So I have shared uh, these three sessions, and I will I will let Clara share the rest of them. So yeah, Clara. Thanks, Eugene. Uh, okay, yeah. so I'll be talking about uh, 4G versus 5G. So what exactly is the difference between 5G and 4G? 
So we know that 5G technology has taken like quite a while to develop and it's gradually rolled out in select cities and it's essentially on track to replace any like previous 4G uh, technologies. But uh, we want to know like what exactly are the improvements like from 4G to 5G and like how does that affect uh, IoT? So here on the slides I'm sharing um, is a table. So it compares like 3G, 4G, 5G in terms of the bandwidth, their latency and the average speed. So we're just going to focus on 4G and 5G. So one of the major differences between the two is actually that uh, 4G has reached its uh, technical limits of how much data it can quickly transfer across the blocks or spectrum, spectrums uh, that Eugene spoke of just now. So uh, with 5G, right, there's uh, the congestion of 4G will be eliminated. So what that means for users is essentially like, you know, uh, we won't have the experience where sometimes you see that you have five bars of networking signal, but actually you can't access any web browsers. So with 5G, you know, we won't have that sort of um, inconsistencies anymore. Uh, the bandwidth of 5G is uh, like uh, 10 times that of uh, 4G, as you can see in the table, and the latency is much lower in 5G than 4G. The speed is also uh, much faster in 5G. So it's 200 to 400 as compared to 4G, which is just 25. So obviously this allows for faster download and upload speeds. So how fast are we talking about, right? So if we look at this other table, uh, we can see that like the last two lines where they are comparing 4G and 5G. So uh, let's say I want to download a high resolution, uh, full HD movie. If I was on a 4G network, that would take me seven minutes. That's still like, you know, still fine, you know, like not that long, but with 5G, because of the speed and the data transfer per second, it would drop to just like 40 seconds, which is just like, you know, really, really quick, right? So, uh, yeah, there's also this like visualization of the different comparisons of key capabilities between 4G and 5G. So 4G is the light blue section and 5G is the dark blue section. So uh, one other thing that 5G does better would be the support. So 5G should be able to support many more devices of the future and for the future, right? So um, it will be able to like meet the demands of um, the network demands of connected vehicles and other devices in the internet of things. So just now Eugene talked about like um, the connectivity density, right? So the connection density, so that's like the bottom of the circle. So currently 4G can support about 100 thousand devices per square kilometer. So 5G, when it's being rolled out, it should be able to support around 1 million. So that's definitely like quite a big jump. So in summary, right, uh, 5G networks uh, as compared to 4G would be able to deliver the level of performance we would need for an increasingly connected society. Right, so now that we know all the advantages of 5G and like how it's a big step forward from 4G, we can start to explore the impact that it has on the internet of things. So as with anything, right, when advancements in devices and networks, it will open the doors to a lot of new opportunities. Some we can speculate and some like which is quite obvious and everything. So uh, with 5G networks, we will be able to introduce new features to mobile apps and softwares without worrying too much about the performance. As we've seen, the speed and the latency has all been improved, right? So a few examples is like uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, and artificial intelligence. There's also improvements in the broadband. So in general, the performance and reliability of any connected devices will be you know, uh, greatly enhanced. We also want to talk about like possible implementations in our lives. So for example, with the 5G network, there'll be support for high-speed IoT apps such as uh, 4K cameras and drones. Uh, it, we believe that it also like, um, push forward like the, the whole development of like autonomous vehicles, right? So right now, uh, we have certain kind of developments, but with 5G, that vehicles will be able to communicate with other vehicles on the road, provide information to other cars about road conditions, and offer performance information to both drivers and automakers. And all these will be like done in real time and everything. So this kind of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication could ultimately like help to um, push the development of self-driving cars and autonomous vehicles like further, and also like you know, safer and ultimately save lives. Uh, remote device controls uh, on a smaller scale, 5G will be able to improve smart home automation. But also because 5G has a remarkably low latency, right? Uh, we can start to look at uh, remote control of heavy machinery. So that will become a reality. So we can start to implement like this kind of uh, remote uh, device controls in hazardous environments, which would help to reduce risk to like workers 
and also allow technicians with specialized skills to control machinery from like anywhere in the world. There's also a lot of healthcare possibilities. So there will be improvements in telemedicine, remote recovery, physical therapy, maybe via AR, uh, precision surgery, and like I said just now, right, with like the remote control, we can do remote surgery as well. So another thing that healthcare providers can do is also to create like sensor networks, you know, to track the patients and share information faster than we've ever had before. Uh, 5G networks will also allow cities to operate more efficiently. So one example would be like, you know, utility companies, they'll be able to ex uh, easily track uh, their usage remotely. An example, if let's say we implement sensors in the city, right, then let's say a uh, street light goes down, it'll be very quick to be able to uh, notify any relevant departments to get it fixed and everything. Uh, 5G can also greatly improve navigational systems. So accuracy of position with 4G is like, 10 to 500 meters, but with 5G, that brings it down to one meter. So if we integrate that with like video analytics and artificial intelligence, it could help to um, adjust like traffic signals and traffic flows in real time, which would in then would help like reduce congestion and like travel times. So if you look at the slides, this is like an overall picture of like how everything could work together in our lives. You know, we have like industry automation, like e-health you know and at home you have 3d video augmented reality self-driving cars and although this paints a very nice picture i think we still have to be careful that like um there would be certain downsides to like 5g because like uh there'll be so much increase in the transfer of data that we do have to look at like potential uh, security issues that might arise from it so you know just that, that's just something that we have to be careful of um i think that's about all the time that we have